Hi, I'm Melinda Tascetta Mullane, Editorial Director of Imaging Technology News, and we are at SIM 2016 with Dr. Paul Naji, who is the incoming SIM Chair and also Associate Professor of Radiology and Deputy Director of the Technology Innovation Center at Johns Hopkins Medicine. Welcome. Thank, Thank you for being here today. Thank you very much. And. Uh, you're going to be speaking tomorrow on leading adaptive change in healthcare IT. Um, you talk about the art of leading change in healthcare IT. What are the main challenges in adaptive technology? Well, I think when we talk about introducing new technology in healthcare, we have to think of it as not just a technical, technological problem of bringing in new technology, but as a social technical problem. Because whenever we introduce new technology, it changes the roles of the providers, of the radiologists and the technologists and the nurses. And so we have to understand the clinical workflow. And also it changes some of their, uh, their interaction with each other. So we have to understand and have empathy of the clinical environment. To be able to, be able to do that, we need to build trust. And so uh, leading change is about building the trust with the clinical providers that you're going to be able to help understand their workflow and you're going to be able to be able to help them when they move into a digital environment to be uh, as productive and as effective in delivering care to their patients. And so understanding that to be a great informaticist is not enough just to be strong in the technology, but being able to be this liaison and have empathy with the clinical environment. And those are social science skills. And there's really are... Uh, science and best practices on how to be an effective leader in healthcare and help providers transition and take advantage of technology, which is what we really need to do today. What adaptive leadership skills are necessary to complement technological changes in a clinical setting? Well, I think the, the two that I see are the most important are understanding the role as an imaging informaticist to be a boundary spanning leader. So there's enormous boundaries in healthcare across different departments, even within a department, across different specialties and sections between technologists and radiologists. And so it's really important for an imaging informaticist to build trust across those boundaries, understand their clinical environments, and be able to uh, help them uh, understand their workflow and be able to lead change. So one is, and there's actually a great science to boundary spending leadership skills, uh, where they can understand the environment and understand uh, that they're uh, to not overgeneralize what they do in their specific workflow to be able to under, and to be able to help them create the leadership to, to lead that type of change. The second one is there's a real science now to uh, influencing behavior and modifying behavior and understanding how to do that and approach that to make effective, sustainable change uh, in an environment. Uh, with that. Most of the change efforts we do actually fail, trying to get people to standardize around a reporting or a workflow. Uh, and so there's actually a nice science to understanding uh, motivation and ability from both a personal level, a group level, and a structural level and how to reinforce that. So uh, the social scientists say if we use four techniques in combination of each other, we've got a 10 times likelihood of leading a change effort. So more than just trying to do uh, an appeal or an incentive program or changing some of the structural components but being able to look in as a dynamic bundle, you're much more effective as a change leader. Can you give a couple examples of clinical IT changes? Sure, they can be as simple as uh, deploying a clinical PAC system uh, in, in, in radiology or trying to do it in orthopedics and other areas. They all have unique needs and, and, and it's really important for the informaticist to be able to have the empathy and listening skills to understand their unique templates. For orthopedics, they need to be, might need to be able to print, they might need to be able to do uh, uh, measurement templating, uh, and so understanding their unique needs to be able to make sure the software is capable uh, in their area. So we, in IT, we like to scale and we like to generalize so that we can make a large impact, but it's also important that we have the listening skills to understand how to make sure we can tailor the technology in a clinical environment. So why is this so important for the, for the future of healthcare IT? So I think we're at a critical juncture, critical juncture at the use of healthcare IT, uh, where we've now adopted EMRs throughout the US. We're at over 90% penetration of PAC systems, so we have technology there, and we're seeing really uh, complex and significant burnout in our provider community. Our physicians are burning out, they're being overwhelmed, they're having a hard time finding information in the IT system. So now is a time where we need informatics leaders to help us tailor the user interfaces, making sure that the, that it really they can summarize and understand the information they need to get to and make sure it's part of clinical workflow. So I think now is the time for us to be, now that we've been able to move from paper to digital platforms, to really be able to harness uh, the power of IT to, to go beyond just uh, digitizing 
our analog workflow to banking it work for the providers in a much more synergistic way. Great, great. And Dr. Naji, you're assuming the leadership of SIM as the incoming chair. What, what's your vision for the future of this society? Well, uh, SIM's goal is to improve imaging informatics and Frankly, we need more leaders, and we need more SIM member involvement. So it's a great way to become a leader is to become involved with SIM. And so we want them, we want, I want to create new opportunities for members to do, uh, involve, get involved with SIM and become a national leader. So I, I find that there's a lot you can do within your organization, but you can also, you also want to map and connect with other peers uh, to exchange best practices so you can learn from outside of your own environment. And then as you start learning from best practices, you start, you start seeing patterns and you can start contributing to to the community as well. So I see that as kind of this natural progression. So what happened with me is I uh, deployed a PAC system, I learned a lot from that, and I started sharing my ideas with other national leaders, and that's how I find I grew as a leader by being able to share my ideas and be able to contribute to the larger society. And so I think this is the, the main product of SIM is creating the imaging informatics leaders we need to help transform the industry and to keep us the, the pace of technology adoption is not slowing down anytime soon and we need to get more SIM members involved. So my primary goal is to make sure that while we have great committees to f perform functions like delivering a phenomenal program, creating a great publication, I also want those committees to be deliberate in their goals of recruiting and mentoring and growing leaders as part of their program. Wonderful, and if people want more information on SIM, where can they go to find it? Certainly the SIM website's a great place. We have a whole host of different, and there's really literally dozens of ways of becoming involved with SIM. We have a great virtual community where they can ask questions and answer questions. We have a journal, we have social media campaigns, we have these nice work groups that share best practice. We have a great one with HIMSS where we're looking at enterprise imaging best practices. Uh, we have um, we have a hackathon for developers to learn how to use, to really create the next generation of developers using web services on DICOM and HL7 to be able to really build next generation information systems. And so whether you're a developer, a computer scientist, a radiologist, an administrator, an IT expert, it, it, SIM is this melting pot where you can find this multi-disciplinary multi perspective to uh, uh, look at to help look at where we're trying to deliver and change healthcare. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your input. We appreciate it. Thank you. My Thank pleasure. You.